I lived uh, in an empty flat for months uh, for the f after everything started, after the pandemic started. I didn't even, even I didn't even have spoons to eat because <laughs> I sold everything. So uh, it was a very difficult time. Japanese government forgot international students in Japan. Many students have had their life on hold for more than one year due to all uncertainty. Students have been working towards the dreams to come to Japan for a long time. It takes planning, money, and effort on their behalf to commit to come. Today, I'm here with Iku from Belgium, an international student that is waiting to enter Japan from April last year, so more than one year and one month. Hi, Iku. Thank you very much for sharing your story today. Hi. Thank you for having me. <laughs> so, Iku, could you please tell us a bit more about yourself, uh, how long you've been waiting to enter Japan, and how is the situation for you right now? Sure. So, hey, I'm Iku. I work as a freelance illustrator in Belgium under the name Iku Tree. And as Davide has just said, I've been waiting since April of 2020 to enter Japan as a student. And since then, I have just been living on standby as a lot of us international students have. And uh, yeah, since one month now, I've had to leave my little Brussels flat to uh, move back in with my parents, to wait, to jump on the first plane available, to move to Tokyo, to join my other uh, classmates who are, some of them are already in Tokyo studying. Um, yeah, I can't wait to go. And I'm, I'm hoping to get an answer soon so that we can stop being on standby and move on with our lives. <laughs> Yeah, I understand. And could you please try to remember back in April 2020? So we're talking about more than one year and one month yeah. ago, so a long time ago. You were ready to go to Japan. Of course, there was a pandemic starting, so I'm sure you were taking all the precautions and you know you you were very careful at the time. But mm -hmm. could you please tell me what happened? You know how how the flight was canceled. You know how your life basically changed at that time because you were planning to go to Japan. And then, and then what happened one year ago? Yes, I actually remember that so, so clearly. It was a very big moment uh, in, our, in my life and I'm sure in other students' life who are still waiting right now. Uh, so yes, as you mentioned, the pandemic was starting, but everybody seemed to say that it was going to be okay, that to travel, things were slowly escalating, but so far they were fine. It was at the end of March where my flight was coming up. Uh, obviously, I had told my landlord that I was leaving. I had sold all my furniture and most of my belongings were already in my parents' house for storage. Uh, I had my plane ticket. I had my accommodation um, already paid for and ready in my hotel for the first night uh, near Narita Airport. And 10 days before my departure date, everything got cancelled. The borders, the first the European borders closed. So no going in, no going out, not even leaving Brussels was possible. So I couldn't go to my parents or anything. I was stuck in Brussels in my empty flat. Uh, and then a few days later, my flight got officially cancelled, even though I already knew it was going to get cancelled since everything was shutting down one at the time. And uh, luckily, I was able to stay in my apartment thanks to my landlord letting me stay for three months and then three months and then three months until now. Um, but yeah, I lived uh, in an empty flat for months uh, for the f after everything started, after the pandemic started, I didn't even, even I didn't even have spoons to eat because <laughs> I sold everything. So uh, it was a very difficult time, and um, now I can look back and say, hey, it was an adventure. I I learned things, but now I'm one year later. I'm 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 ready for something else. I'm ready to move on. I'm ready to <laughs> resume that Tokyo plan that has mm. been on standby for so long now. What happened to, you said you were, you already paid the hotel and uh, mm. the apartment in Japan, right? Um, yes. Did you get the money back? What happened to that, to that part? So for the flight, luckily I got a voucher that I managed to extend. Even now I had to call and they extended it for another year. So I was lucky with that. For the hotel, for the first night, I got a refund. Again, very lucky with that. And for the accommodation, it got uh, luckily canceled and I got a refund. But since the money 
had been transferred, a large amount of money had been transferred once and then back with the transfer fees, I did lose quite a bit of money on that extent. And obviously I lost my room in the, uh, in the shared house that I was going to go to. Right. So you lost in terms of like maybe hundreds of dollars or hundreds of euros with exchange rate is about that? About 200 euros total. So I am lucky seeing like the amount of money that I already Mm -hmm. like hate the school and the flight and everything. That 200 is a small amount compared to everything, but it is 200. It is it is money that I would prefer to use in Japan once I'm Mm. there and researching and trying to listen to the news, but also I've had to try and stabilize my everyday life. Um, So trying to get a little bit of work in because I obviously, um, I was a freelancer, but I also had a few jobs on the side to balance everything. But I had quit those jobs to move to Japan. So now I was in a situation where I was looking at the news, but also trying to get a little bit of freelance work and um, trying to wait, but also move forward, not to, lose an entire year but it was it's impossible to live your life not knowing where you're going to be in a month so you can't apply to a new job because you can't tell your employer oh I'm, I'm starting but I might leave or it's even the little things like you want to I know it sounds silly but you want to buy some food in bulk for example but you're like can I eat everything in a month? So you have to buy the small portion and then the small portion. And it's little things like that where you just can't plan your life for more than maybe two or three weeks in advance. You can't RSVP to a friend's wedding or I know there's a pandemic, but let's say a wedding in another year. You can't RSVP to that. You can't plan anything. So it really does take away your sense of purpose in life to just be on standby. You're you're like in the middle of everything. You can't go there or you can't go there. You're just stuck all the time. So that's pretty much what it's been like for me, just waiting. Yeah, and and, and I understand that basically you have to be always ready to uh, go Mm -hmm. to Japan because whenever they open the borders, they may not give even give much notice. So you may have to go, let's say, next week. Otherwise, you will lose the classes and you know the tuition fee and everything. So that makes everything even even harder. Not having this this plan, mm-hmm. not knowing, for example, let's say they open in in two months with this. For people that do this, they can enter in Japan in two months. Knowing that, of course, you can prepare for the next two months. But no one knows that because the government hasn't given any any information, any plan so far. And that, of course, it's mm-hmm. absolutely unacceptable. Uh, we understand we are in the pandemic. We understand that me- measures are required. We understand the quarantine. We understand the, uh, that you need to be tested before, after, during the quarantine. You need to check your health with the app. You need to. You cannot take public transportation. Everything is 100% acceptable, but not having the possibility to use those measures, and no one can enter Japan, uh, even long-term residents like students or workers. Uh, it makes things really, uh, really hard for uh, for people like you that are uh, have been waiting for so long. Japanese government is thinking that uh, Japanese study can is, learning Japanese can be can be done online uh, mm. because you know it's not necessary to be to be in a class. I know some universities are teaching uh, are teaching online. I know that uh, you know some type of schools are teaching online in Japan now because of the pandemic. However, I think it's very important to say one learning Japanese language. It cannot be done in a foreign country because especially for western people you cannot learn a japanese language without living in japan uh, you mm-hmm. can study three four hours a day sure but then when you're outside you have no chance to speak the language uh, you don't learn the culture which is so important to know also the culture together with the language you just need to have the, the immersion and foreign students they want to study in japan especially western students but in general foreign students they want to study in japan because they want to be in japan and study in japan they just don't want to study japanese language <laughs> uh, on a book or online or, or, or things like that so that, that's one important thing second important thing is that if at least the students could come to japan and follow all the measures so even study from home but in japan uh, mm. That would be just a huge improvement because at least you don't have to wake up at 5, 5 a.m. I know some students are waking up at 1 a.m. if they're in America. Uh, they would study from 1 to 4 a.m. But at least if mm. you're in Japan, you're in the same, in same t- uh, time zone. Uh, you can follow all the measures that 
uh, foreigners and Japanese people are following in Japan. So you try to, you, you keep all the social distance. You don't go to, of course, uh, big events and things like that. Uh, mm-hmm. Students that want to study Japanese in Japan, they want to be in Japan and you cannot have the same experience if you are in your country. And, and online doesn't work because it's a different time zone. It's 3 a.m. in the morning. It can work for a month, but not for a year. So exactly. I just want to say that as well. But um, um, yes, uh, Iku, uh, I just want to say thank you very much for, um, for sharing uh, your story. I think it's very important that uh, you know, everyone understand how difficult the situation for, uh, for international students. I hope that the, the government, you know, the prime minister, Suga, uh, the minister of foreign affairs, Motegi, the minister of education, Agiuda, they don't forget international students and give them a clear plan about when and how they can enter Japan. Uh, like uh, Iku, today there are thousands more students that have invested time, energy, and money to study in Japan. They have already paid school fees, apartment, apartment fees. They've quit their job in their countries one year ago, and they're still waiting to know when they can enter. Please do something and let international students enter Japan. Uh, that's everything for today. Thank you again, Iku-san, and see you all next time. Bye. Thank you for having me. Bye.